This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Hello, and welcome to episode 112 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts, and today it's just you and I. Surprise, it is a Tip Tuesday episode. If you are new to the podcast, a Tip Tuesday episode is a solo episode where you and I just chat about something I am doing in my own wedding business. I own Vista View Events at Open Heart Ranch with my sister-in-law. It is a wedding venue here on our family ranch in Colorado in the Rocky Mountains. Today, I'm talking to you about my nine productivity tools. Tools I use on a daily basis for the venue, and I give you the cost of each tool if it has a cost. I also give you a couple of examples of how I am specifically using that tool in the venue business to give you some ideas about how you could potentially use it in your own business if you're looking for some productivity tools. Before I jump into this episode, there's three things that I want to tell you. The first thing I want to tell you is that the Venue Academy waitlist is still open. I really want you to join me in the Venue Academy hosted by Lindsay Lucas. If you are someone who wants to own a venue, if you want to build a venue, purchase a venue, be a venue runner, period, like I am, the Venue Academy is for you. I have a solo episode coming out all about the Venue Academy and what it includes, but for now, If you just want to be notified when it opens, how much it costs, the bonuses I'm offering, you will have lots of one-on-one time with me, a fellow venue owner who can tell you the ins and up, the insides, the upsides, the upside downs. I didn't say that right, but you know what I mean. Go to shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com, click on the Venue Academy at the top, hop on the wait list. I'm not going to email you anything else except for Venue Academy related items. And then that wait list will be over once the course uh, closes, once the cart closes. So hop on the wait list. If you've even thought for two seconds about starting a venue, because you'll want to know more so you can make a decision about whether or not you want to join me and Lindsay. Number two thing is it's my birthday. As I record this, it is September 24th and it's my birthday today. I am 31. And so I have decided to give 31% off everything in the opt-in shop. So all of my opt-in bundles which include nine done-for-you opt-in bundles, lead magnets, whatever you want to use them for to gather emails on your own site so that you can turn those those looky-loos, those leads on your website into clients by offering them further value. An opt-in bundle could be for you. They come in five colors and they're a hundred bucks. So go grab one. They are over at shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com or click the link in the show notes here while you're listening to the podcast. And the third and final thing before I talk to you about these tools is to tell you that I don't think business tools make us a business owner or and sometimes they don't even make us more productive. I don't want you to think that you need to spend multiple, you know, $50 times five on multiple tools every single month to have a quote productive or organized business. A Google spreadsheet or a Google Doc will work just fine in a lot of people's cases. So please don't think that because I have tools or any somebody else has tools that it's going to make you more productive. Sometimes it doesn't, especially if you're not managing a lot of leads or you are managing a lot of leads, but you have this great system that you're using in Google Drive with Google Sheets. I think that's great. Continue to do what's working for you. These are just what's working for me right now. And I hope these examples help you see what's possible. But I don't want you to think if you're not using anything that you need to go out there and spend a bunch of money every month to have a organized, productive, profitable business. That is not the case. And I just want to show you what's possible with what I use right now. And a lot of these are free even. So I wanted to get that disclaimer out of the way. Let's dive right in. These are not in sequential order except for number one because it is number one in my heart because I do a lot of stuff in it. And number one is, of course, Dubsado. We do have a CRM because we do manage a lot of leads and clients each year. And for our clients, I have a lot of paperwork and a lot of reminders that go with that because people are engaged for 9, 12, 14 months and they book their venue first. So we have a long relationship with them and we want to keep in touch with them. And we do that through certain automations and things of that nature in Dubsado. I use Dubsado. Let me back up really quickly and just tell you that I'm going to do a whole episode on all of the workflows and how my personal Dubsado is set up. But in this episode, I'm just going to give you a blanket general idea of how I use it. Number one is Dubsado. Um, All of our contracts are in there, all of our addendums, which are things people, clients need to read and sign. I do all of our invoicing through Dubsado. 
Our Dubsado account is integrated with Stripe. So Stripe is actually processing the payments, but everything happens in Dubsado because it's an integration. And I have a lot of workflows set up. And a workflow in Dubsado is essentially saying, when this happens, do this. So here's a specific example. When a wedding is 65 days away, Dubsado, automatically send an email that reminds the client that they need to schedule their ceremony rehearsal and turn in their special event insurance certificate to me. That's an example of a workflow I have set up in Dubsado. If you haven't listened to episode 110 with Chelsea Foster, I highly encourage you to go listen to that episode. It was incredible. It was packed with information. She gives us more examples of workflows and automations we can set up to organize our business. And I would love for you to head back to that episode after this one, of course, to take a listen there. Number two, oh, let me back up. Dubsado is $25 a month. I pay $20 a month because I signed up for it a couple of years ago and they've recently raised their prices, but I would pay $25 a month if I had to. It's definitely worth it if you're at that stage of business. That's how much Dubsado is. You can also pay yearly if you'd like to. We pay monthly. Grammarly is the second productivity tool. Grammarly is a Chrome extension. It's installed on my browser on my iMac. And it's a spell check tool, essentially, you know, bare bones explanation. It spell checks anywhere on my computer, I'm typing something. So I don't have to use a Word doc or a special word processor to make sure I'm getting things correct. Anytime I'm typing, whether it be an email, whether it be in a Word doc, whether it be, oh, here's a great example, which I love, Canva. I use Canva a lot as my design tool because I design my own graphics for the venue. And it, it also works inside of Canva. So if I'm typing text on a graphic, Grammarly will pop up if I've spelled something wrong and helps me correct it. And it also gives you the correct spelling and then you just click it, automatically changes it for you. It's very handy. I use the free version. There is a paid version as well. There, okay. Number three, that's all I have to say about Grammarly then. Number three productivity tool for VistaView events is I actually have my email accounts and my calendars on my phone. (sighs) My phone sort of feels like a 100 pound gorilla. That's not a very heavy gorilla. 600 pound gorilla or whatever they say. Is it 800? I don't know. Somebody tell me how much a gorilla weighs, would you? My phone feels heavy is what I'm trying to say because all my social media apps were on there, all my email accounts, which I have a lot and calendars and things of that nature. And I realized I tried to take my email off of my phone, but I it, it harmed me because I can't remember everything and I'm not great, especially after having kids and just, well, I just truly cannot remember stuff, you friends. So I actually had to put my email back on my phone so I could have access to my Gmail calendars. I really needed them for reminders to see what was happening that day because I'm very dedicated to entering things in my Google calendars, but I needed those reminders. Otherwise, I would forget. And so what I actually learned to do, though, is to turn off the mail function of those accounts on my iPhone so I can still get the calendar function of those Uh, Gmail accounts, but the mail isn't coming through. And what I'll do is just two times a day, I'll turn on the mail function if I'm out and about, if I'm not at my desktop, to see who's emailed me and to see if anything's really important that I need to get back to, and then I'll turn it right back off. So I'm not constantly inundated with email because before I learned how to do that, before I learned how to turn off the mail function and just get the calendar, I was constantly refreshing my email like a complete psycho. And I couldn't stop. I could not stop. It was an addiction. And so I finally learned how to turn off the mail function and I only turn it on a couple times a day. If I'm out and about, if I'm at my house, then I sit down three times a day and check my email. So that's one of the, my, that's the third productivity tool is having those email accounts on my phone specifically for the Gmail calendars because I use those for everything. Our weddings from Dubsado are even synced to our Gmail account. So I know when a wedding's coming up. I mean, hopefully I wish I should know that without my Gmail calendar, but you know what I mean. Okay, number four uh, productivity tool I use for VistaView events is the native voice recorder app on my iPhone. I believe that Androids have something similar, but I all iPhones come with a native voice recorder app and I use it a lot actually. I'll use it for even outside of the venue, which I'll share in another episode, but for the venue specifically, uh, if Katie and I are 
brainstorming at a wedding, especially during dinner time when we're not doing anything and we're kind of just hanging out outside, we do a lot of brainstorming and a lot of business dreaming. And uh, there's things that we talk about adding to our contract or policies that we want to change for the 2019 season or beyond. And I want to remember all of the things that we talk about. So I'll quickly record a voice note to myself and I can make those changes to our contracts or make additions or what have you and remember what our conversation was. Or another way I use that app is during a tour or a final walkthrough of the, at the venue, I will be taking very minimum minimal notes just to remind myself of what we talked about because I don't want to be sitting there writing a paragraph when I should be looking at the person in the face. And then after, right after the tour, when everyone leaves, I will sit down with my notepad and my voice recorder app and record an extensive voice message to myself that gives all of the details of what I need to follow up on, what I need to send to the couple or to other vendors et cetera, et cetera. So those are two ways that I use the voice recorder app in a really efficient manner. And that is, again, the native voice recorder app that automatically comes with an iPhone. So it's free. Number five actually might not feel like a productivity tool to you, but it is for me. And those are the power sheets from Laura Casey and Cultivate What Matters. I really love using the power sheets and I, I consider them a productivity tool among other things, but I consider them a productivity tool because they really help me flesh out what I'm focusing on in this season of my life or what I'm focusing on in the next couple of quarters, what's really important to me, what really matters. And those answers to all of those things, what matters to me, what's important to me, etc., those actually drive my monthly daily, weekly actions, right? So I figure out what's really important to me via power sheets and I make my tending list. If you don't have power sheets, tending list doesn't make sense to you. But if you do use power sheets, you know what I mean? If, you know, then by making sure I'm outlining what is actually important to me, I can make sure I am, you know, daily, weekly, monthly doing things that bring me closer to those goals. And I feel like that is a productivity tool. Number six is Text Expander. Text Expander is sort of, you know, like using keystrokes on your computer or canned emails and Gmail in a way. As a venue owner, and I know, you know, as a photographer or a planner, you get a lot of the same questions over and over and over again. And or you're writing, you know, salutations at the ends of emails or what have you. I put all of those in my text expander. And what happens is you you dump it into Text Expander and then you create a simple stroke and it automatically populates everything for you so that you're not actually typing it out. Here are two examples. So a really easy example is I save my favorite email sign-offs in Text Expander and I save, I think I have five saved because I don't like to tell people the same exact thing all the time. So I'll switch it up, but I just click one little two buttons and boom, my sign-off has automatically populated into my email and I can send it off. Or even better, here's bigger ways I use Text Expander. I get the same questions about the venue from clients, especially if they haven't gone through our Dubsado contact form and haven't gotten my automated email. Maybe they just email me directly from to hello at Vistaview Events. Everybody wants to know the same questions. You know, tell me more about what's included in your venue, how much does it cost, et cetera, et cetera. All those basic questions, right? Well, that's the same answer. I personalize the email, but the bulk of it, the meat of the email, what they want to know is always the same for everybody. It's, you know, the venue is the venue. So I have that in text expander. I just hit two keys and boom, four paragraphs automatically fill out in the email. And then I just personalize it a little bit, sign off also with text expander and send it out. And it takes me literally one minute to answer, you know, a, par a, a paragraphs of email um, so that they have all the information they need. It saves tons of time and I really like using it. I started using it actually with Acuity. Yeah, they, that's something that we use in our in, at Acuity Scheduling to stay productive. And I started using it in my personal business as well. Number seven is, I uh, put them together. I could have made them seven and eight, but they're, they're essentially pretty similar. So Dropbox and Google Drive. Those are both storage tools that I use for lots of big documents, big files on my computer. Dropbox, I pay $10 a month for because I want the one terabyte of storage uh, and Google Drive is free. I don't know what their storage capacity is, but I have not hit it yet and I use it a lot. So I'm assuming it's pretty large, but I use both of them. I Let me tell you, let me share what I use those for. 
Uh, I store photos from our weddings at the venue, from our photographers when they send us galleries. We, of course, want to keep those. So I actually store those in folders named for the couple in the year in both Google Drive and Dropbox because I want them stored in two places. So that way, if one goes down, I still have the other one. And uh, those are large files. They're pretty massive. We like to save a lot of pictures. So uh, once again, keep them in both places. You don't have to do that, but I do because I kind of like to, you know, better safe than sorry, as they say. I also, in Google Drive specifically, I store contract samples for the venue. So a lot of times before a client signs with us, they want to read our contract or contracts, depending on what they're signing for. And they want some samples in which we're happy to get people. In fact, I wish more folks would ask for samples of contracts. So I will send them an easy way to do that is I just copy and paste a link into an email. And I actually, instead of just linking the Google Drive link because it looks kind of funky, I will hyperlink a piece of text to like click here to see our contract sample. And that whole sentence will be hyperlinked and they'll be taken straight to Google Drive. It's a view only document and they can read our sample contracts. And also, uh, which goes along with the third one, a oh, third way I use uh, Google Drive and Dropbox is I, you, I, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering. Our wedding experience guide is loaded into Google Drive. I used to put it in Dropbox, but I put it in Google Drive now. Our wedding experience guide is an online magazine. It tells people exactly what to expect if they're getting married here. It has a lot of pictures. It has a cute quote page. It has a little bit of bio about me and Katie, as well as all of our FAQs. And it's a really big file. So of course, I don't want to ever link that to an email or, or excuse me, uh, upload it to an email because if you if you attach big documents like that or if you attach anything, period, you run the risk of getting sent to spam or junk, especially if you're an unknown sender to a new lead because you have something so large attached to your email and their email processor is like, ooh, I don't think we want you to read this. So they'll you run the risk of you know bypassing their inbox. So I always encourage you just to link up big documents of any kind, even if you're sending emails to people you've communicated with in the past. It really just improves your chances of not getting sent to junk or spam uh, or automatic automatically. So I hyperlink our wedding experience guide and uh, away we go. And I use Dropbox and Google Drive for that. And again, I pay $10 a month for Dropbox. There is a free plan, but with for $10, you get the one terabyte of data, which has been good for us because we get a lot of photos from our uh, photographers for galleries and we appreciate them. Number eight communication or number eight productivity tool is actually a communication tool. It's called Voxer. I might have mentioned it on the show before. It is an it's an app on my iPhone. I download it. I use the free version. There is also a paid version, which allows you to keep the entire historical log of your conversations. I don't have that. I don't really need it right now. But I communicate with other business owners and other professionals through Voxer. It's a nice way to be not face-to-face, but voice-to-voice with someone. I don't always like to text because sometimes you can just solve things in you know 30 seconds of conversation rather than going back and forth with 10 text messages. And Voxer is great for that. And it's also a little more personal. Uh, one thing, disclaimer here, I do not communicate with clients on Voxer. So I use it for the venue with other vendors and other professionals. I don't communicate with clients via Voxer or via text for that matter. And then finally, number nine, I'm sure this is not surprising, Acuity Scheduling. I Full disclosure, I work for them, but I would use it if I didn't. I use Acuity Scheduling to schedule to private tours at the venue, ceremony rehearsals, and final walkthroughs. I do not go back and forth with my brides about what time they're available for these things or my clients. Uh, if someone emails me after they've looked at the calendar and say and gives us, you know, their personal circumstances, such as my husband works on weekends, I can only come on Wednesday night to see the venue, then we absolutely make those concessions. But we don't volunteer those concessions because truth be told, boundaries equals freedom. And eight out of 10, sometimes even just nine out of 10 couples will pick a time that you've already said you're available. It really brings freedom to your schedule because you know, I only do client phone calls on Wednesday nights or whatever it is for you. For me, we only do tours after weddings on Sundays and a couple of times during the week in the winter. That's that's us, right? That's what we do. And I don't have to think to myself, oh, gee, every single night this week, I'm out at the venue during tours. And like I say, most people pick a time that we have available. 
So that saves me from having to go back and forth with them on that. And if they don't, it's usually a very special circumstance and we're happy to make an adjustment, but that's for the the few, right? It's not the many. And it also, it cuts down on that communication that can become confusing. Like, oh, Sally, are you available Wednesday at six to meet? Oh, I'm actually not because I'm going to the movies. Can I do Thursday morning? No, you can't because that's when I go to my bar class. Like, it's just annoying. Stop doing that. Get out of your email inbox for scheduling. I please, 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 please get an online scheduler, put in your hours that you want to work. And maybe even a few that you're like, okay, I know these are popular hours for now. And get out of your inbox and stop going back and forth with when to meet people. You don't have to do that anymore. Acuity for me is free because it is attached to my Squarespace website. We use Squarespace for VistaView events. And if you are a Squarespace client, Squarespace and Acuity have a deal where you can get their uh, Acuity's Emerging Entrepreneur Plan, which is their $15 plan, for free. It's awesome. So if that's you and you aren't using Acuity yet, you can uh, DM me on Instagram or shoot me an email and I will tell you how to get that. It's super fun, super easy, and you will be excited about your schedule. Uh, Acuity has a couple of other, two other payment options. You can do a $25 a month plan or a $50 a month plan, and that really just depends on how many features you think you need. So for instance, you can get text message reminder, a text message reminder if you have the $25 a month plan. I haven't found that we needed that because I don't want to encourage clients to text me. We don't allow text communication, so that's one reason we don't use that level. But do know that if you're interested in that, there are a couple other levels of acuity that you can choose to purchase. So that's it, my friends. That's nine tools I use on a daily basis for VistaView events. A lot of them are free or have free options. Like I mentioned at the top of the episode, there is a PDF guide with all of these details, including the examples of how I use them and the price and the link to find them over at shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com forward slash blog forward slash episode 112, or just pop into your show notes, click the link and you'll be taken right over there. You don't need to enter your email address to get that PDF. It's free to you. There's no you know exchange for email. So just grab it. And then that way you can start to decide if some of these productivity tools will work for you. I like to talk about productivity. I'm constantly learning how to be more productive. I'm definitely a student of productivity. I don't have anything mastered yet. If you want to chat about it or if you have more questions about any of these tools or other tools, you can DM me on Instagram. I'm at SheCreatesBusiness or email me Kinsey at SheCreatesBusinessPodcast.com. Until then, I will see you next time for an interview episode. That's for those 2% people out there. Uh, But I hope you have a great day wherever you are. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.